everybody. I'm currently headed home after work and I got a pretty jam-packed evening of doing absolutely nothing. So I'm doing this now because once I get home I just want to lay around. Um, if you can't really tell, I'm a little nasally. I came down with the flu after traveling this past weekend to Nebraska uh, for the social movement I volunteer for called because I said I would. And apparently taking four different flights, uh, you're prone to picking up some of those nasty germs a little bit more than uh, normal. And my immune system has not been up to par this year, which sucks. I actually just got over laryngitis and a double ear infection uh, two weeks ago. So going through this again, just picked up my airborne and theraflu and everything that you could possibly need to make yourself feel comfortable while your body fights. But this is not why I'm making this vlog is to talk about my sickness, but it's to go over my vlog, my blog <laughs> that I had uh, posted on toxic relationships uh, last week beginning of last week. Um, basically it just reviews on the different signs or the key characteristics of toxic relationships and how you can determine if you are in one yourself and uh, how to basically just get yourselves out of it. And it's common sense and I know a lot of it is easier said than done. Um, myself, I guess I really don't think they were entirely toxic until the very end of the relationships, which happens, you know, when a breakup happens, you're, you fight apparently more. So the different characteristics that I list are passive aggressiveness, um, narcissism or a narcissistic person belittling, name-calling, jealousy, physical abuse, which is a tall tale sign of a <laughs> toxic relationship. You should not put up with that whatsoever. And then I think there was one more. Let's see, I listed passive aggressiveness, jealousy, possessiveness, name-calling, belittling, threat threatening, uh, narcissism, physical abuse, stalking, that's another one, there you go. I think that's seven. I wasn't really counting because my hands are on the wheel. <laughs> Anyways, any of those key signs or characteristics don't ultimately determine that you are in a toxic relationship, but if you're experiencing multiple of these, I would say that you are. Um, the best way that I can say to get out of it is to seek help from other people. And the best way to get yourself out of a toxic relationship, if you know you are in one, is to consult with, uh, you know, your peers, your family, your friends, co-workers, or if you want it to be a little more private, go see a counselor or a therapist, or seek help from authorities if you're in an abusive relationship. I would say don't put up with it any longer. There's no reason that anyone in the relationship should not feel wanted or needed or special. Uh, I have been in situations like that in the past, as I've said, but I'm not going to go into further detail. I'm just here to give you my best advice. I know plenty of people in my life who've been in and out of relationships and are still in the same relationship that they should not be in and everyone around them can see it's very unhealthy. Don't put up with it. There's no reason, especially when it comes to physical abuse and stalking and name calling. It's a two-way street in a relationship and there's a give and take. Both people have to put their best effort into a relationship to keep that relationship, especially if you love that person. Now, if you're name-calling, 
calling someone an idiot or that they can't ever do anything right or whatever or fine or giving them the cold shoulder. It's definitely not a healthy relationship, especially if it continues. I know that from my experience, sometimes people don't want to leave a toxic relationship just because they're so comfortable and they fear the unknown of what would happen if they leave that person because they feel like they would ultimately just be alone in the world, which you are not whatsoever. You're not alone. The last time I experienced this was last June. And after I realized that I had many people who loved me that were a part of my life, losing those certain people didn't matter because I know I still had much more love surrounding me and I was so unaware of it because I was stuck in this frame of thought that I'm never going to find anybody. And that comes to basically my overall conclusion of this is that you have to love yourself first. You can't worry about what other people think of you and you can't let anyone control your life. You can't let anybody control your life at all whatsoever. And if your partner is controlling your life and you're not doing what used to make you happy or what you know can what you know can make you happy then it's time. It's time to move on and find someone that can help you do that and help you realize those different things. But most importantly, focus on you 100%. You don't need you don't need any negativity in your life. You have to love yourself first. And I know probably a ton of you hear that all the time. And it sounds very cliche, but it's absolutely 100%, I'm sorry, 110% true that you do something, that you do this, that you take this time to pull away, get yourself out of this toxic relationship, at the very least, once a day, do something for yourself. And during this time that you spend alone, it's a path to rediscovery of who you are as a person and what makes you tick and once you figure that out you're going to figure out what you look for in a partner do not absolutely do not need another person to help you do these things at all you just need you because at the very end we only have ourselves Why do I always get into this motherfucker? Son of a <laughs> Okay. Turning around because apparently they can't say road Excuse me, people. <sighs> uh, there he goes. Okay. Damn.